Good morning, my dear friends in Christ. Happy New Week to you all. Today is Monday, May 5th, 2024. We are now in the sixth week of Easter. Whether we like it or not, the persecutions Jesus warned about in today's Gospel passage are real. We cannot escape the world's hatred because we don't belong to it. However, our consolation is that we are never alone. We have the Holy Spirit as our ever-present helper amid danger. With great anticipation, I invite you to join me in today's episode of the Liturgy of the World with Father Evaristus Ege Meyo Abu. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, as we delve into your word today, may we not just understand it, but truly believe it, and live it out in our daily lives. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 11 to 15. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 149, and our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 15, verses 26 to chapter 16, verse 4. First reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Setting sail from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Somatris, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed that there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia, from the city of Thyatira, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to listen to what was said by Paul, and when she was baptized with her household, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion's children exult in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory and rejoice as they take their rest. Let the praise of God be in their mouths. This is an honor for all his faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The spirit of truth will bear witness to me, says the Lord. And you also are witnesses. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When the counselor comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness to me, and you also are witnesses, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said all this to you, to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming, when whoever kills you will think is offering service to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you that, when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. Yesterday, someone asked me, Father, why do we pray, come Holy Spirit? Don't we have the Holy Spirit already dwelling in us? After reflecting on this question, I realized we cannot get enough of the Holy Spirit. The fact that you have read the Bible or even know everything in it should not stop you from reading it daily. Each time you read the Bible, you gain new insights. Similarly, when we pray the Come Holy Spirit prayer, we ask for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, we get a heightened sense of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, we acknowledge our need, that is, our dependence on the Holy Spirit to live a virtuous life. Fourthly, we express our humility. And fifthly, we seek the Holy Spirit's power to transform our lives. As we continue to deepen our understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit, let us now examine some lessons in today's readings. Number one, the Holy Spirit, the principal agent of evangelization. In today's gospel passage, Jesus describes the Holy Spirit as the spirit of truth who, bear witnesses, who bears witness to him. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot know the truth about God. We cannot witness to God without first receiving the witness of the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, even when we witness to God to our fellow human beings, our success depends entirely on the Holy Spirit. In today's first reading, we hear the story of Lydia. Luke, the author of the Acts of the Apostles, tells us that the Lord opened her heart to give heed to what was said by Paul. The Lord opened our hearts. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 14. If the Lord does not open the acts of people to listen and accept the message, the preacher's efforts are in vain. It is never a matter of eloquence, knowledge, or diction. When we say, come Holy Spirit, we are not praying only for ourselves. We also pray for those we intend to minister to, that the words we utter may be meaningful to them. Lesson number two. The Holy Spirit, our provider. Lydia pressed upon Paul and his companions to stay at her house after she was baptized. Once again, we see how the Holy Spirit works through individuals to provide whatever is needed for the mission. When Jesus sent out his disciples to preach, he warned them not to carry purses or extra tunics. He knew that God would never give you an assignment without providing everything needed. You might not know where help would come from, but you only need to trust that you are working for God, who owns everything in the universe. God provides through the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to give us counsel, that is, we need the Holy Spirit to witness to God for us so that we can now witness to others. That is the first lesson today. And the second lesson is that we need the Holy Spirit to provide for us. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit is our counselor. Lesson number three, the Holy Spirit is our counselor. In today's gospel passage, Jesus describes the Holy Spirit as a counselor. The word counselor can refer to a lawyer who defends a client in trouble or a therapist who advises one experiencing psychological trauma or other related difficulties. In other words, the Holy Spirit as counselor is a solid helper for us as we battle to survive in a world that is not ours. A few days ago, 
Jesus told us that the world hates us because he has chosen us out of the world. The world cannot love us because we don't belong to it. Today, Jesus tells us that a time will come when whoever kills us we think is offering service to God, meaning that persecution will come not only from the enemies of God but even from the friends of God. Persecution will come even from our fellow Christians. How do we cope under these circumstances? With Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is both our lawyer and our therapist. Let us say that prayer, come Holy Spirit. Continue to say that prayer every day. May God bless his words in our hearts. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.